Hi Lacey, we're the grandees. You already know me of course, and this is my husband Adam. We are so sorry to hear about your loss Lacey, we will try our best to make you feel right at home, and help you in any way we can. I stared at them in disbelief. In what alternate universe do children get adopted by their teachers? Wow, I can't believe what is happening right now. Lacey, say hello, said Mrs. Rivers with a reassuring smile. Hello Mr. and Mrs. Grandy. During the time that they were there Mrs. Rivers asked them many questions about what they do for fun and what they plan on doing to entertain me. In turn, they asked me about my hobbies and interests. The interview lasted for about 45 minutes, which seemed like 45 days to me. Lacey, could you please go out into the hallway so I can have a word with Mr. and Mrs. Grandy, said Mrs. Rivers, which sounded more like a command rather than a question. I waited outside for 10 minutes when Mrs. Rivers came back out and asked me about how I felt about the Grandees. I liked the idea of staying with someone familiar but also didn't like the fact that it would be awkward. I didn't feel ready just yet be in a permanent home, but it was better than moving from house to house. They seem like a nice family, I would be delighted to stay with them, permanently. Perfect, you can go back and have a seat on the couch, the adults will work everything out. You have nothing to worry about. There is nothing to worry about. Yeah right. My father just died and I'm being placed with my teacher. What happens to my stuff? How far away will I be from my old house? Will I see my friends? So many questions kept popping into my head I was beginning to feel ill. I went in and the adults were in Mrs. Rivers' office dealing with what I assumed papers. I lay down on the couch and began to watch cartoons again. Seven o'clock Mrs. Rivers came to wake me up and told me I was going to be spending the night there until someone can bring me to my house to gather my belongings to move in with the grandees. She led me to a room with eight cot-like beds, three of them being used by other confused-looking children. She gave me a pink nightgown I could put on, since I didn't have any clothes except for the ones I was wearing. Once I was changed and laying down in the cot I stared off into space. Not dreaming, but pondering. What was my life going to be like now? I didn't have anyone, except for my teacher. And who said they were really going to like me? Or treat me right, the way I should be treated? Unwillingly I dozed off into a deep sleep, which I found unusual, since it was only nine once I was settled and I usually go to bed around 10.30 or 11 o'clock o'clock. I needed the sleep though, there was a big tiresome day ahead of me, which I wouldn't find out until later. Lacey, Lacey wake up. I opened my eyes, groggy and irritated that I was shaken awake, I didn't like mornings very much. What time is it? It's six o'clock, but I thought you would like to be woken up before the other children. I don't like mornings let me sleep. Lacey you had an accident. What? I sat up in the cot and could feel, and smell the predicament I was in. I peed in the bed. What was happening? This has never happened before, and especially shouldn't happen to me. I was in a panic state at that point. I covered my face with my hands and began to cry, not loud sobs but more of a soft drizzle of tears. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. I will clean it up I promise. Lacey it's okay dear. This happens to many children, believe me, you're not the first. Just go and clean up, your clothes were washed there on the shelf right next to you. The bathroom is right there, there is a shower with shampoo and soap. The towels are hanging on a rack above the toilet. Okay. Better hurry up though, you have a big day ahead of you.